Hello retro gamers and welcome to the sort of video where you can see my hands instead of my face Ashen style Today I'm going to take you through my process of creating a computer that dual boots Windows 98 SC and Windows XP Service Pack 3 uh, The reason I'm doing this is because I like to have a computer around that has Windows 98 on it Primarily for DOS since it's the last operating system that could run DOS No worries mate so these two computers, if you've been around long enough on this channel, will look familiar. This is my ye old faithful X XP machine, which will soon be running XP as well as Windows 98. And then there's this guy from a video, it was a few years ago now. Long story short, I found this on the side of the road and I got it working in that video, but I started to have issues later on and I did quite a bit of troubleshooting. I swapped out just about every part in the computer to see what the issue was. The issue was is that it wasn't booting correctly and when it did, it didn't really work that well. It appears that it's the motherboard that's the problem. And unfortunately, that seems to be the most expensive thing to buy on the secondhand market for some reason. It, it just overtakes all the other components by quite a large margin, which is really annoying. So. Maybe I'll, one day I'll pull the motherboard out and maybe I'll see about doing a recap or something like that. Um, <clears throat> but as time has gone on, parts of this computer have started to fail. Like the, the sound chip on it failed, the floppy drive failed. So I've been using this as a pass machine more than anything. So there's some missing bits out of there. And I thought for space reasons, why not just have both operating systems in the same computer? It seems okay on paper and uh, in, in, in theory. So be interesting to see how in practice it actually works. Uh, full disclaimer, I've never done this before. I'm just following some tutorials I found online. There are videos on YouTube, but honestly, the quality of them are pretty subpar. A lot of them seem pretty old too. So um, hopefully if you want to do the same thing, you can watch me do it in glorious 4K, hopefully successfully, and you know, it might be helpful. <clears throat> But yeah, enough talking, let's get installing. Okay, so here's the Windows XP installation as it currently stands. I've basically just turned the computer on so I can put the Windows 98 install disk in. <laughs> Windows 98 install disk in. Um, basically what we're gonna do is do a complete format of the hard drive and then create two partitions, one for Windows 98 and one for XP. We're going to install Windows 98 first and then XP second. Apparently, from what I've read, that is the best way to do it. I'm also gonna plug the video cable straight into the motherboard as opposed to the graphics card. So then sort of everything's working at a base level. So there's no conflicts. Obviously we'll need to install the, you know, the video card drivers later for both Windows 98 and XP separately. All right, let's switch her on and boot using the disc. I'm also, I should also point out here that I'm using a PS2 keyboard and mouse. Sorry, got distracted by the sounds I was making. I'm using uh, both this keyboard and mouse plugin via PS2, because in Windows 98, USB isn't really native. Kind of is, but not really. So this is just another level I'm taking to make sure that there's no issues. I don't be plugging in a USB keyboard and you know not be able to do anything until we've installed the proper drivers. So it's turning on and the disc is spinning, but we don't have anything on screen yet, just a just a blank screen. Maybe I need to plug the cable back into the video card. Oh, I know what's happening. It's because the video card's still installed. It's probably completely overriding the, um, the internal graphics. Whoops. So, I don't know, I guess I'll just plug it back into the graphics card and see what happens. And if it doesn't work out, I'll completely pull out the graphics card until I need to install the drivers. All right, take two. Let's see if it uh, actually displays something on the screen this time. Screen's refreshing. Oh, here we go. Hopefully I don't have to reset the boot menu. Hopefully it just figures out there's a disc in there and decides to boot off of that. All right, so 
the uh, VGA to HDMI conversion device didn't seem to like showing this sort of stuff. Um, so I've just got it plugged in directly uh, via VGA. We just want to choose uh, Start Computer with CD-ROM support. And this basically gives us a low level DOS experience. Well, I don't know if it's a low level DOS experience, but it's DOS nonetheless. So we're going to be running a DOS program called FDisk. And this is running straight off the Windows 98 installation disk. Say yes to that. So basically, I'll just show the partitions here. Basically, there's one partition here at the moment, FAT32 under C. So basically, we're going to get rid of that partition. And naturally, before anyone asks in the comments, it's going to delete everything on the computer. There's been several tutorials I've had in the past where I thought I was clear on that. People still ask, oh, but will it delete all my photos? Yes, this will delete everything. So make sure you understand that before you do this. So basically now we're going to go number three, delete partition. And this is going to knock off about five years of retro game on stuff, but don't worry, I've checked to see that there's, any, there's nothing on there that's worth backing up. Uh, so we're going to delete the primary DOS partition. See, data in the deleted primary DOS partition will be lost. So there's no volume label, so we'll just push enter. Are we sure? Yes. And like that, it's gone. It's, it's sort of funny how quickly it does it. So now we're going to create a new partition. We're going to create a primary DOS partition. And it's going to do some stuff. It's going to do some integrity verifying stuff. Okay, so here it asks if you want to use the maximum size. Since we're creating two partitions, we want to say a big fat no to that. And then it's, it's going to do that again, apparently. But when that's done, we can basically choose how much of the drive we want to be used for the first partition. In my case, I'm just going to go for 50-50. So 50% is going to be for Windows 98, and the other 50% is going to be for Windows XP. I haven't really had a good, long, hard think about which should be more, which should be less. So I'm just going 50-50. Straight in, baby. All right, so here we can choose either in size, how many megabytes we want to devote to the partition, or basically a percentage. So, just for the sake of this, I'm just gonna use the percentage thingo. And that's doing it as partition C. Uh, it's important that C is for Windows XP. So, we push escape to continue. And now, we want to create uh, it's a little bit different than what it looked like last time. Oh, no, we want to set it as the active partition, of course. Yes, that's right. So we want one to be active. Partition one is made active. Cool. Now, we can create, go back to, oops, back to one. Yeah, we want to create an extended DOS partition. This will be for Windows 98, otherwise known as Drive D. And it's going to go through the disk integrity thing again, which is pretty annoying. Okay, so again, for the extended partition, we can choose the size. So we've already used 50%. So naturally, if you know math, which I don't, we can go 50% again. So it's created the partition, go escape to continue. And it's, yeah, it's going to do that again. Big surprise. Cool, so let's finish that. Um, basically, we're at 100%. We've used all the potential space we can, so we go escape. And then we'll need to reset the computer for the changes to take effect. Like it says right here, you must restart your system for your changes to take effect. Okay, so push escape again. And uh, I'll just manually turn off the computer. There wasn't anything embarrassing on my second desktop there. Ah, didn't like that. Looks like I'll have to go for the hard reset. 
Alright. Back to VGA. Alright, let's see what happens. So now we go boot from CD ROM. And start Windows Setup. Let's see what happens. I'm sort of going into uh, uncharted territory here. Although I've installed Windows 98 plenty of times. Seems to be working. So we go continue. Ah, oh, here we go. Hard drive, hard disk drive C is not formatted. I don't want it on C. I want it on D. Uh, No, push the wrong button. Hard reset, hard reset. Abort, abort, abort. Alright, button's stuck. Alright, let's go back in. And uh, let's relaunch FDisk. Supposedly I should be able to just go format D. No. <laughs> We'll go back into F disk. See what the dealio is. Display partition information. Ah, I haven't set it as I've set it as D somehow. Set active partition. The number oh, okay, we'll go two. Partition two is made active. That didn't really do what I wanted it to do. Maybe now that's the active one, I can install on D and then when I install Windows XP, it will be able to choose C and do that. That's sort of a big if at this point in time. Uh, yeah, I guess I don't really have a choice though, do I? Alright, so let's reset the computer again. This time holding it down, apparently that's what you need to do. it stays in VGA, this monitor loves just to choose to whatever thing is active, even when you want it to stay on the particular channel, or input I should say. Okay, I did say drive D just then, so that's good. How come it still says drive C? Embarrassing. Why? Okay, how come it lets me do C but not D? And how come D isn't assigned? I'm getting a bit confused here. I might have to do a bit of hunting around and see what the issue is. All right, so pretty sure I skipped a step. Um, I finished formatting C and when I chose to format D, it basically said it didn't exist, it thought it was a network drive or something. So basically what I forgot to do was create a uh, logical DOS drive in the extended partition, the extended partition being D. <laughs> so now I've done that, it's done this little check and I'm just going to uh, create the uh, logical DOS drive for the entirety of that partition. There we go, D. All available space in the extended DOS partition is assigned to logical drives. Okay, so if I push escape, I go display. Oh, I have to reset, of course. Yeah, so let's escape. Um, let's just see if doing that actually like resets. We'll go back into F disk. I don't think it does though. I think I actually need to get off my butt and manually push the button. Yeah, no, it doesn't. <laughs> so let's uh, let's reset and let's hard reset. Turn the computer back on. 
Of course, the monitor has to be annoying. Yeah, so I'm not sure if there's some sort of shutdown command when it's in DOS, but I guess holding down the, the off button on the computer does the job. Just takes a little while. So now hopefully if we go into F disk, it will show C and D. No, it doesn't. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. It's... See, it doesn't accept it there. Oh, man. I don't know. D is there. Those D's there, because so let me choose it. Maybe now if I go format D. Yeah. <laughs> okay, F disk wasn't really working out for me, so I'm taking a bit of a different approach to partition the hard drive. I'm using a boot disk called. Uh, it's by Falcon 4. I can't remember the name right now. I'll put the name on screen now. Um, but basically, it, this is like an operating system streaming straight off a disk, a boot disk that I created. And there's a partition section in the software. So basically, uh, doing it this way, it means I can make the primary partition NTFC, which is better for Windows XP. Uh, Windows 98 doesn't support NTFC, so of course that's uh, pretty the logical partition is FAT32. Um, I've never used this before, I'm just sort of winging it. It looks pretty similar to the software that's built into Windows. So hopefully it automatically makes that C and that D, or it'll give me the option to do so now. All right, looks like this is probably gonna take a while. Obviously it's more advanced, but not as quick as FDisk. So, oh, no, there it goes, done. <laughs> never mind. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's it. There's nothing else to do. I might boot back into FDisk and sort of see how that reads it. Although it might not read it at all because this is the NTFC, but I guess we'll see. Just thought I'd add really quickly, part of that boot disk, which is this, by the way, that's what it's called, has this mini... Windows XP that streams completely off the disk, which is amazing. I've, I've used programs like this before, but never so, uh, you know, intricate like this. Anyway, <clears throat> when I go into their version of my computer, look at that, we've got C and D. So that's, that's pretty promising. I like to think it is anyway. All right, so basically it knows there's partitions. I don't wanna go into it just in case it screws with it. Control or delete resets the computer, by the way. <laughs> uh, handy fact from before, well, I didn't know, I actually did know that. I was able to remember it in a timely manner. Anyway, now that we have the partitions all good, let's try and install Windows 98. So rule of thumb, if you're doing a dual boot, always install the old operating system before the newer one. Because then you put on the new one on top of the old one and it sort of knows that there's the old operating system there and it can, you know, do the dual boot, boot thing. But if you go the other way, obviously Windows 98 has no idea what Windows XP is, but XP knows what Windows 98 is, if you get what I mean. Okay. So it's found non-DOS operating system files on your computer. If your computer has... Do not remove these files. This. Right. Okay, so now we need to choose the second drive. Yes. No, because I need to use 
need to use the other one for Windows 98, not this one. I need to use D. Ah, man. These things never match up with the tutorials you look up. I guess I might be using a different type of boot disk, I don't know. But in the uh, tutorial I found here, it says that I should be able to choose the partition it installs on. Yes, it says here, obviously you can't see it because it's off camera. It says, make sure you choose custom install and specify the installation folder as D, Windows. Assuming D is your second partition, which it is. So how do I choose custom setup? No, no, it's frozen. <laughs> Alright, well I guess I gotta go figure this out now. Computers are fun. Alright, trying something different. It's only the one tutorial that says that Windows 98 needs to be installed on the second partition. Nowhere else seems to mention that, so I figured I may as well swap the partitions around using that partition software from before. And I've made partition drive C, FAT32, and then D and TFC, so hopefully if we run setup now, it, it won't have an issue. It'll just uh, happily install on FAT32 like it's supposed to uh, on drive C, since it won't let me choose the other drive. So I guess we'll see. Okay. No mention of the other partition. Oh wait, I'm just going to read from the last cluster in drive C. All right, I think that's fine. I'm pretty sure it's just referring to drive D, which is NTSC. Uh, so hopefully, yes. All right, well, <laughs> it's off to the races now. Oh dear. All right, that's pretty exciting. I've never seen this screen before. Surface scan. I hope this doesn't take forever, it's like 20 to 10 at night and I'm a sleepy boy. Well, as per usual, I have limited recording time, so I shall report back. Alright, here's a bit of a fun update for you. Uh, using those partitions before just would not work. I tried it to do it a couple of different ways, but the uh, Windows 98 setup program just did not like it at all. It runs scan disk, scan disk ran for about 40 minutes as you saw in the last shot and then eventually errors would start coming up. It want me to start making repairs to the hard drive uh, so I wasn't going to mess with any of that. So what I did, I, I went back into that boot disk and there's actually DOS based programs in there and there was another version of S F disk in there called like extended F disk or something. I'll offer up, I didn't film any of it, but I'll offer up a photo now. And it seems like it's okay. I don't want to get my hopes up, but I certainly didn't get this far before. I started the setup after adding those partitions and now it's formatting it. And it's actually doing drive D, believe it or not. So uh, yeah, well, we'll see where this goes. It's getting late, but I hope to at least get the, uh, the base installs of the operating systems done tonight before I go to bed. All right, this is nearly done, taking quite a while, as you'd expect. I'm sort of paranoid that it's formatted the entire hard drive again and gotten rid of the partitions. I just say drive D, not drive C, so I guess we'll see. And hey, that rhymed. Oh, this is that check from before. Uh, oh no, ah, uh, let's just say stop or just skip it. Okay. Ah, uh, oh, this is so frustrating, especially since it takes so long to go through these processes and then you just get the same error. Like it's just, it's wasting a whole bunch of time and it's very frustrating. I think it says errors, but there is no errors. It's just two partitions. You're stupid. All right, so a little has happened since the last shot. It's actually the next day. I've decided that I'm going to install Windows 98 on one hard drive and Windows XP on another, since I have a spare hard drive. 
and the whole uh, partition thing isn't really working out. Um, I've just spent the last 40 minutes trying to get the install to work with both hard drives connected and it hates that as well. So for now I've just disconnected one of the hard drives and I'm going to install Windows 98. And then I'm just going to rough this a little bit and it's probably going to work out really badly. But uh, once that's installed I'm going to plug in the other hard drive and try and install Windows XP onto that and we'll just see what happens. It will probably fail badly, um, but you know, what do we have to lose really? So I'm not going to bore you with the entire Windows 98 setup. You can watch my other Windows 98 video if you want to see that. It's really not that interesting, so I'll catch up with you soon. So yeah, we got about 20 seconds in after I press stopped on that last shot. We already have an error. And just like that, we're stopped in our tracks yet again. Focus. I don't know, let's just restart and see what happens. That's the furthest I've gotten. <laughs> I haven't even got to the setup stage. I keep getting stuck on the check disk stage. So, yeah, why do you keep going out of focus? Spoof from the hard drive this time. Invalid system disk. Don't know why it keeps going out of focus. I'm gonna plug in the other hard drive and just try with that. I don't know. Who knows? Nothing's working anyway, so I might as well just throw things at the wall until something happens. Okay, it is yet again several more days in the future. Well, time really travels faster than this video. Um, I wasn't getting anywhere before, as you could possibly tell. So I took a few days off from this project. And in the meantime, I actually went back to a, a pub on the day of them reopening and unwittedly walked into a bunch of camera crews and ended up on the nightly news. So if you're in Perth, you may have seen me. Um, I didn't know they were there. You can see how thrilled I look in the footage. Anyway, all that aside, as you can see here, I've actually gotten somewhere. I've got Windows 98 installed. So what I did is I gave up one of those hard drives I was using. The health tests on it were coming up fine, but I think that there must be something wrong with it because Windows 98 just absolutely refused to install on it. So what I did is I grabbed the original hard drive that was in this computer that had Windows XP on it, and I just, I reinstalled Windows XP, and I put that other hard drive back in, and you know, everything seemed fine, and I used a program to format it to FAT32, because within Windows it doesn't let you format to FAT32 unless it's like 32 gigabytes in size, but, uh, sorry, uh, under 32 gig gigabytes of size. So I've gone and found myself a completely different hard drive looking on my part shelf. I remembered I had pulled apart an old uh, security system not too long ago, and that had an old IDE hard, IDE hard drive in it, 250 gig, which is pretty big for this. And um, using that boot disk and plugging it in and checking it out with the partition manager, there's actually no partitions on it at all. The security system had never been used, which is old and out of date. I got it for free from somewhere from an old place I used to work. Um, so as far as I know, this hard drive has never been used. So I formatted, I actually I didn't have to format it. I just plugged that hard drive in and no other hard drive and installed Windows 98 and I had no errors whatsoever. We've now got it running. I haven't installed any drivers yet or anything. Um, I want to make, get the dual boot working before I dive into all of that because there's a possibility I may need to reinstall it down the track or what have you. But yeah, this is a good sign. So I've only got that one 250 gigabyte hard drive in there now. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is plug the original hard drive in there, which I've confirmed that works with Windows XP. Hopefully reinstall Windows XP on that and then Windows XP should take care of the whole uh, dual booting process. But yeah, this is good. So I'll plug that other hard drive in, try and install Windows XP, and I'll check back in with you. Here's something you might find amusing. The hard drive from the security system is actually just a little bit too high. A little bit higher than a conventional hard drive for some reason. So with that installed at the bottom, there's actually not enough room to install another hard drive on the top. And I can't just leave it sort of hanging out like that because if I try to rotate it back in, you can't really see it because of this mess of cables, but there's the CPU fan behind there. So once I get this all working, I might have to get my off-brand Dremel out and do some case modifications. Ooh, that'll be exciting. 
Okay, so I don't want to jinx myself, but I've successfully started the installation for Windows XP. So originally the installation wasn't working. It was hanging at a screen after it loads all the drivers and it would say starting installation or something to that effect and it would just get stuck. Uh, so there's a, a certain mode that I had to switch it to, which I can't remember off the top of my head, but I will link, I will just show that at the bottom of the screen right now. And managed to get past that hang screen. And then I got a message saying that it couldn't pick up a hard drive. So what I did was change around the order that the two hard drives are plugged into the into the computer. So originally the Windows 98 hard drive was plugged in first as priority. So I just switched those around. And for a brief second before the installation auto started, a screen coming up asking me what uh, operating system I wanted, either XP or Windows 98. So that gives me hope. Um, obviously just flash for a second because I can't actually choose Windows XP yet because it's still installing, 36 minutes remaining. Um, but yeah, this is a good sign. This is the furthest I've gotten so far. So, but there's lots of different pro problems that it's thrown at me so far. So fingers crossed. Good news, everyone. I think we're finally there. I think I've finally done it. I'll show you. So obviously it's in Windows. Fuck. Alrighty, we're at the end of the video. Looks like I've done it. I don't know why it doesn't say Windows 98, it just says Windows. But I'll show you it working. So here's Windows XP. Just want to point out I haven't installed any drivers yet for the... Actually, I don't even have the video card or sound card installed yet. I'm not gonna worry about that in this video. I think it's probably already run long enough and it's pretty boring anyway. But I just wanna show the dual booting working. So there's Windows XP, there's a lovely flower. And if we restart, I'll show you it booting into Windows 98. There we go, boots pretty quickly. I mean, I don't have anything installed yet I and mean, it's Obviously just running off an old uh, well, ATA hard drive? No, no, well, it only uses IDE, so I can't remember off the top of my head what it's called. But yeah, that's it. That's the end of this video. Thanks for sticking around. I'm, I'm sure this will be a pretty long video, but we got there in the end. So yeah, hopefully uh, I'll have a bit more PC content on the way now that I have access to both operating systems and an environment that should be working. But yeah. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.